Alex Vines is the director of the Africa program at Chatham House. He joins us live from London. Alex, this deterioration in relations between Mali and France, not entirely surprising. But you could say that France's involvement there in fighting terrorism has been effective. And doesn't Mali have much more to lose from this relationship going south than France does? Yes, Mali's got a lot to lose from this, and the relationship of people to people is really very close between Mali and uh, uh, and, and the people of France. So I think this is all posturing. Uh, the neo-colonial issue is one that always comes up, and uh, it's true that uh, France uh, has a particular style of relationship with its former colonies uh, uh, that, that is particularly keenly felt, and we see this in uh, in Bamako, uh, as well as other uh, former colonies in, in West Africa and beyond. So we'll see what happens, but uh, clearly the junta are reconsidering their position by suggesting that there is a way through this. Um, Paris is really uh, unnerved by the military junta and opening its doors to other international players to come in and assist the junta, particularly Russia. So. Um, this has got a lot to play for, I think, in the, in the, in, in the short term. Right. Let's talk a little bit, too, about the growing threat of terrorism in Mali and how instability opens the door for more of that kind of activity. And also the questions over the ability of the Malian military to handle that threat on its own. Well, as, as your reporter had said, the, the, the French were invited in in 2012, um, not only from, from the government in Mali, in Bamako, but also uh, for, from the economic community of West African states and the, and the continental body, the African Union. And there was a UN Security Council uh, resolution that also endorsed it, that was uh, that the pen holder, if I remember right, at the time was Nigeria. They were a non-permanent member of the Security Council. So um, France had goodwill to help African countries uh, respond to the jihadist threat. Uh, and he here is the conundrum. The, the, the junta haven't been doing particularly well, uh, and I'm not convinced that, that Russia uh, will be a good replacement long term to, 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 to the French and other Western assistance that Mali has been receiving to fight jihadism. So uh, in the end, there is going to have to be compromise here. Uh, Mali is in a real danger of being a, a, a weak state, becoming a brittle one uh, in terms of uh, its ability to provide security to parts of the country. Right. And the junta, when you look at the plan that they've laid out, now putting a five-year delay on holding an election, saying that 2026 possibly will be the next time we see a, posit, you know, a, a potential for democracy there. Meanwhile, Mali is under sweeping sanctions because of this coup. It certainly doesn't bode well for the people there. No, it doesn't. And, and the key problem is the legitimacy of the Malian state. Uh, and this lies in the politics of the capital, Bamako in particular. So um, the delay of an election to 2025 is all about power and the patronage that goes around the junta, basically. And this has been the problem, that nation building, state building in Mali hasn't really been successful. Hence, there's been plenty of room for others to kind of move in. And this is where the jihadists have, have profited, because they're saying the parts of the country that they're in are maybe better governed or there's at least better social distribution uh, th th than what Malian governments have done, which has been uh, basically rent-seeking, corrupt, and not providing benefits to the majority of the Malian people. Yeah, that kind of instability can also easily spill over across borders as well as we've seen. Great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us, Alex. You're very welcome.